Hi, I'm Hub Arkin for Pro Football Weekly, here to continue the theme of the 2012 NFL playoffs. It's reruns as opposed to original programming. We've got the final one of Weekend 2, the Sunday afternoon game, as the Houston Texans revisit the scene of the crime where they kind of got swamped by the New England Patriots just three or four weeks ago. Arthur Arkish, associate editor, covers the Houston Texans for us. Kevin Fishbane covers the New England Patriots. And Arthur, I will start with you. Why is it going to be different this time around for the Houston Texans? I don't want to take anything away from the Patriots, who obviously played a fantastic game, dropped 42 points on the Texans. But what I will say is that things couldn't have gone any worse for Houston. From the first snap, an illegal formation penalty, to Matt Schaub's careless interception, to just all the breakdowns in coverage, failing to cover uh, Aaron Hernandez in the red zone. You just don't see that typically from a Gary Kubiak coach team. So I expect them to be a lot more disciplined. I expect them to be more prepared in every aspect. I think the defensive backs are playing better. Uh, I think Arian Foster is going to be more involved. He's going to have to be more involved, obviously, if they don't get to fall behind early. Uh, I think these are a few factors that are working in their favor this time. Well, Kevin, another rerun of sorts. It's the postseason, and the Patriots are getting better. Seems to happen every year. Playing pretty good football right now, although they did have the week off. Yeah, they get, get the bye week. The interesting thing about that for them is if we go back to 2010, they trashed the New York Jets in the regular season, got the bye week, and then lost to them in the playoff round. So this is you know familiar territory for them. And Bill Belichick admitted it as such this week. So they're very aware that the Texans are going to bring a better game this week. But you're right, they were playing better down the stretch. Even that game against the 49ers, we know they lost, got off to a bad start, but they played a great game in the second half, and they get Rob Gronkowski back. They're going to be fully healthy on offense with Gronkowski and Hernandez get healthier on defense as well. So they're hitting their stride at the right time. You know, Arthur, I think my concern for the Houston Texans, clearly they were better last weekend against Cincinnati, but on offense, they still didn't get it done. They should have won that game by three or four touchdowns. What's missing on the offensive side of the ball? I think aggressive play calling, really. In the red zone, they have not shown a willingness to throw it into the end zone. I think Kubiak's relied a little bit too much on that defense, which has played excellent, but you have to be careful there because uh, when you go to Foxborough, you can't settle for field goals, of course. So I hit a little bit on Arian Foster. He's going to have to be more involved. For that to happen, they not only need to, of course, avoid falling behind early, they need to account for Vince Wilford. He was a game wrecker. He was the best player on the field for the Patriots, in my opinion. And that's saying a lot considering Tom Brady had four touchdowns. Now, Kevin, the one formula that has worked occasionally on the New England Patriots, pressure Tom Brady early without blitzing. J.J. Watt can do some of that. He can't do it by himself. Can the Patriots keep J.J. Watt from taking this game over? Well, they worked hard against him in that last matchup. And, you know, he didn't get a sack or a tackle for loss, but he did have three quarterback hits. So he got after it. You know, he, he's going to go against that right side, is my guess. You know, try to get take advantage of Dan Connolly, who he's a much better player than. Uh, but the Patriots are well aware, and Bill Belichick has been open about how Watt's the best defensive player in the league. And, and, and you know, we heard the story about using you know the tennis rackets to try to prepare for him last time, and, and it worked in some way. Brady throws the ball so quickly. Look for them to run the ball a lot again with Stephen Ridley. That's the way they keep defensive lines from getting after Tom Brady, and that could be the key in this game. Arthur, they need a second option on offense, the Houston Texans do. Andre Johnson had another incredible year. Owen Daniels was kind of up and down. Who's the guy who has to step up for the Texans to get into a point-scoring war with the Patriots? Well, other than Foster and Johnson, I believe it has to be Owen Daniels. Daniels. He was actually the leading receiver last week, played a solid game. As you mentioned, though, he hasn't done it consistently all year. They haven't gotten the type of production they had envisioned from the rookies, Keyshawn Martin, Devere Posey, Kevin Walters, kind of just a guy. So for me, it has to be Daniels. I think another encouraging sign was Foster having the most receptions last week against Cincinnati. He had all season. That was a part of the game his game, excuse me, that we saw kind of drop off a little bit this season receiving out of the backfield, but he needs to be uh, a bigger factor in that respect, and they're going to have to be excellent on offense to have a shot. Kevin, are the Patriots healthy enough on defense, particularly in the secondary in that pass rush, to make life miserable for the Texans? Well, we'll learn a lot more when the game starts. We thought Keith Tlaib is fully healthy, and they're going to need him on Andre Johnson. Alfonso Denner has a nice rookie year, starting on the opposite side. And Rob Ninkovich, who's really been a game changer for them, gain after the passer. He got hurt in that last game of the season. We really don't know, you know what strength he's going to be at. But on the other side, Chandler Jones is a guy that should be fully healthy. You know, he had a great start to the season. Injury slowed him up a little bit. And, you know, if they can get pressure, that helps the secondary a lot. You get McCourty and Gregory back there. The safeties have been much better this season. Prediction time, guys. Arthur, the Texans are your club. They're the visitors. We'll let you go first. I don't think it's going to be a laugher. I mean, I'm not going to go against the Patriots, who I believe are Super Bowl bound. But I do see the Texans being better prepared this time around. I expect a closer game. They've got to get ahead early so they can run Foster do what they like to do best. In the end, though, Belichick and Brady, that's who I'm taking. You know, the one thing about that matchup last time, Arthur mentioned the Schaub interception. There was also a Stephen Ridley fumble. The Texans did not recover. He doesn't throw that pick. They recover that fumble. 
whole different ball game. I do lean to the Patriots again. I think it's going to be closer, but Brady at home in the playoffs, hard to beat him and getting this team at full strength. I mentioned earlier, Rob Gronkowski could be the difference. He didn't face the Texans last time they played. He's back, gets that bye week, and we know how good he can be, especially come playoff time. All right, closer maybe, more competitive early probably. But at the end of the day, I didn't see enough from the Texans last week against Cincinnati to tell me they can stay within two touchdowns of the New England Patriots. That is our preview of the Patriots-Texans game. We've got the in-depth breakdowns of all this weekend's playoff action right here at ProFootballWeekly.com.